Neun Mark Mechaniques. Question. Incline planes. Love these kind of questions because, in general, nine mark questions and mechanics require a lot less work than pure maths. And also, everything in mechanics is just triangles. So if you know Sokotoa, mechanics shouldn't be too difficult. So what we got here? A particle of mass 0 0.5 kg. So the first thing we're going to start doing is adding our forces. I'll do this in a different color. Now when you do these guys, draw the lines very long. Okay, so 0 0.5 kg means the force is 0 0.5 g. If it's resting on the plane, there is going to be a reaction force, R. So it's resting on a rough plane, so there is friction. Now, I don't know exactly which way it's pointing. Then we have 35 degrees horizontal. The particle is being acted on by a force of 6 newtons, an angle of theta to the plane. Now, the first thing I notice here, guys, is with this six newtons, I do not like it when it is pointing towards the particle. All the forces should be pointing away from the particle. So an easy way to rectify this is you extend the line. Remember, forces do not have a length, okay? They have a magnitude, but not a length. So uh, I guess you guys learn it in maybe year seven when you're babies and you're doing physics and they draw a little tiny force and a bigger force, a longer force you say that the force is bigger, but in truth, guys, that is false information, okay? So this, I'm just gonna copy and paste it on the other side. So it's pointing away, so it looks like this. All right. Now here we're gonna use our vertically opposite angles. So we have this cross, so that theta is gonna be the same as the theta over here, all right? Now I can do this, you guys can't do this in the exam, but just for your visuals, I'm going to get rid of this. But in the exam, guys, I probably would draw another picture for these kind of questions where you have a force pointing towards the particle. But I can just get rid of it. All right. Uh, all right. Given that mu is 0.4, so that's telling us about the friction and the particle is at the point of slipping up the plane. OK, so it's not moving. All right. The particle is not moving but it wants to move up this way, okay? So if it wants to move up this way, it means that the friction force is pointing down the plane. Now, one thing I always ask my students is, are we going to write F or mu R? You write F if it's just in equilibrium, so Joe you know here where it says it's just resting, if that was the case, I would have just put F. But because they're saying it's at the point of slipping, it means that it wants to move up. Friction's at its maximum, this is mu R. So I'm going to write 0 0.4 R. Okay, find theta. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to resolve all forces so that they are pointing parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Yeah, so we're looking, all right, which things are not pointing parallel to the plane? It's the 0 0.5 G and the 6. That 0 0.4 R is perpendicular to the plane. The R is fine. But again, these two forces, it's not looking good. So we do a triangle of forces. We're going to go into the plane. So you're saying that 0 0.5 G is pulling the particle into the ground, right? Pulling down this way means pulling into the ground. And also it's trying to pull it down, it's trying to put it down that plane. So that's how that triangle works. Now this is 35 degrees. If that's 35 and this is 90, this will be 90 minus 35. This is 90, 90 minus 90 minus 35 makes 35 over here. Okay, this is the adjacent side. So again, it's all about the triangles. This will be 0 0.5 G cos 35. This ops will be 0 0.5 G sine 35. Once you've used the force in your exam, cross it off. Because at the end, hopefully, every single force has been ticked off. Let's do the same with the 6. Now this 6 is pulling in this direction. So what is it trying to do? It's trying to pull the particle up the hill, but it's also pulling it into the ground, isn't it? So the way we resolve this one is it's gonna go up the plane into the ground. Now, this is the adjacent side. Yeah, so it's gonna be six cos theta. And this ops is gonna be six sine theta. Cross this off. All right. Now this is good, this is the easy part. We're gonna look at up and down the hill, they have to be equal, 
and out and into the ground, it has to be equal. The particle is not moving. It's always better to look at the out and the in first because this depends on R, so you might as well do it. So what we got? Out versus in. What is pointing out the ground? What's pointing out the ground is R. Anything else? No. Cross it off. That is going to have to be equal to anything pointing in, which is 6 sine theta and 0.5 g cos 35. Now guys, do not use a calculator for as long as possible. Okay, cool. I think I'm happy with that. Now let's look at out and in the gr uh, up and down the hill. They have to be equal. So you have 0.4 R. Actually, let's do this one first. 6 cos theta is equal, because there's nothing else pointing up that hill, is equal to these two added together. They're, the bo they're both pointing in the opposite direction. So 0.4 R and this. So 0.4 R, I'm not going to write R. I'm going to write this. 6 sine theta 0.5 g cos 35. So that's that. Making sure I've written that properly. And 0.5 g sine 35. And just for space reasons, I'm just going to write that underneath here. 0.5 g sine 35. Now we're trying to work out theta, right? So we're going to expand everything, bring all, all that stuff to one side, and we will see what happens. So what have we got? We've got 6 cos theta, 0 0.4 times 6 is 2.5 uh, sine of that. Just double checking. Yeah, 6 times 4, 25. All right, so like I said, guys, I mean, you can use a calculator for that. 0 0.4 times 0 0.5, a half of 0 0.4, 0 0.2. So we get plus 0 0.2 uh, G cos 35 and 0 0.5 G sine 35. How do we solve this? This is a bit of a sticky one, I can't lie. Uh, it looks... Like, we need to bring everything, well, the signs and causes to one side. So what students think we need to do here, and it's, it makes sense, is we need to try and change it to tan, right? You can't do that here. Because when you bring this to this side, that's not zero. You can't just divide through by cos. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring it to this side. So I get 6 cos theta minus 2.4 sine theta is 0 0.2 g cos 35 plus... 0.5 g sine 35. We are going to have to rewrite this in terms of one function only. And you need to recognize this as the R transformations. This is the R transformations. And you need to decide which form you want to put it in. So it's going to be in the form of R. The first function is cos. So we're going to write cos. The angle is theta. Now, think about the additional for cos, it changes the sign. C for changes the sign. So that minus would mean plus here, alpha. How do you work out R? It's very simple. R is Pythagoras to the coefficients, 6 squared plus 2.4 squared. How do you work out alpha? Alpha is always inverse tan, provided you've done the form correctly, inverse tan of the second number over the first number. Okay? So... Uh, I have my calculator handy here. This, um, I don't really know how I want to represent that just yet. I always YOLO these videos, so I have to kind of think on the spot. So this is um, 6 root 29 over 5. Actually, John, I'm going to type this in, but I'm going to store the value for later use. So inverse tan of, and right now I'm in radians, so let's be careful of that one. And I didn't even change it. So let's change that to degrees. 21.8. Dot, dot, dot. I'm going to store that as letter A. Cool. So what do we have now? This has been written as this. It will become 6 
root 29 over 5 cos of theta plus a, which I've stored, I'm not going to write that down, is all of this. I'm going to start typing that in. Okay, 0 0.2 times 9.8 cos 35 plus 0 0.5 times 9.8 sine 35. So 4.41, I'm just going to make sure that I've not made any silly mistakes. 0 0.2, 9.8, cos 35, uh, 0 0.5, 9.8, sine 35. Cool. So we get 4.41. Dot, 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 dot. I'm going to divide that by, divide that by 6 root 29 over 5, which is 0 0.6. Eight, three, dot, dot, dot. Inverse cos answer. So in terms of the range, guys, we know that beta is a Q. So inverse cos of the answer. Theta plus y stored as a is 46.89, dot, dot, dot. And now I'm going to subtract a, and I'm going to round it to two significant figures because we use gravity to be 9.8, about 25 degrees. And that, guys, is your solution. And this is an incredibly challenging, and also I didn't even stick to my principles yet. Every force crossed off, innit? But yeah, this is an incredibly tough mechanics question. It started off like standard procedure, but as soon as you have to recognize the R transformation, it makes this question way harder, okay? So we're going back to our pure maths here. So guys, if you learned something today, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, save this video for your future revision, and subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, links in the description. I've also got an Easter revision course coming up. So again, if you're interested in that, links are in the description. Join the Lung Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Noise.